Introduction. First, a lesson from Pablo Picasso. An American tourist saw Picasso having a coffee at a Parisian cafe. She mustered the courage to walk up to Picasso and said in her high school French, Mr. Picasso, what a pleasure to meet you. Can I please ask you to draw a portrait of me? I'll pay you whatever you ask. Picasso picked up a sketch pad, quickly drew a portrait, and handed the drawing to the woman. That will be 5,000 francs, madame, he said. What? It only took a couple of minutes. No, madame. It took a lifetime. What do we learn from Picasso in this short story? Well, we learn we need to deliver unique value to our clients. It was not the amount of time it took to make that drawing that mattered. It was his experience, his fame, the personal interaction, and the fact that the drawing was a Picasso that altogether constituted the value he delivered to the client. This story also teaches us how the client's price expectations were different from Picasso's. She could have gone to any other street vendors who were drawing portraits for only a few francs. Maybe her expectation was that Picasso would draw a portrait for the same, or perhaps twice or triple that price. But she did not expect him to charge her the outrageous price of 5,000 francs. Finally, this story tells us that if you do not convincingly communicate the unique value of a product or service, that is the value that only you can provide to your customers, your price will generate sales friction. As we can see from the short story, there are only two potential outcomes. The client could refuse Picasso's price and walk away, in which case he would tear up her drawing and throw it away. Or she could reluctantly pay the 5,000 francs, becoming a grumpy customer. The alternative would have been for Picasso to say, if you'd like an original Picasso drawing, one that will be worth 20,000 francs in five or 10 years, I'll create you one for only 5,000 francs. This approach delivers a value proposition to justify the price and a value over and above the time it takes to draw the portrait. The woman would be happy to pay the 5,000 francs now. Picasso would get his 5,000 francs and the woman would become a happy, proud customer. What a difference. And this is what this book is about. How perceptions of value, communication, and the willingness to buy or sell interact. How can you leverage the learning from this interaction to increase the perception of value, and therefore, the price, while making your customers even happier? This is a personal book, and in it, I will share with you, the reader, the practical knowledge I have gained from more than 30 years' experience as a business executive. I will also share the experience I gained from many hundreds of client interactions and from pricing thousands of products and services while helping companies with pricing and pricing strategy, as well as many personal stories from my personal experiences with pricing as a buyer and a seller. I'll share the mistakes I've made so you can avoid making the same ones, and I will share pricing best practices and academic research from behavioral economics, which is a field that studies how people make purchasing decisions. In this book, I will also provide you with a variety of practical pricing tools and methods you can use to increase both sales and profits, often at the same time. This book is aimed primarily towards those who have the greatest need to price correctly. It's for companies that cannot afford to bring in one of the top half-dozen general business consultants who would show up with an army of suits and charge well over seven figures to offer help that, more often than not, is useless. I've talked to a legion of business leaders who said things like, I've got a foot-high stack of paper from our business consultant, and I have no idea what to do with it. That's not the outcome one would want when spending well into the six- or seven-figure range. Thus, I'm writing this book. I have several audiences in mind. Executives at small to mid-sized companies who are struggling or experiencing stalled growth or those who want to take their business to the next level or as many do, those who are wondering if they're leaving money on the table. If that's something you worry about, I can guarantee that you are. Product managers, marketing managers, and business unit executives with profit and loss responsibility at large companies who are chartered with improving competitiveness and business results. Companies that have a product, product line, service, or line of services with a sales volume that falls below the company's expectations. Companies that face consistent and rampant discounting and are unable to hold a price at the desired level. Executives at startups who want to mitigate one of the most common reasons for business failure, pricing errors. 
This book will help these leaders ensure they're using the right methods to set the correct price for their products and services. Business school students wishing to augment the abstract theoretical teachings of pricing and economics. That is, those who will need to know how to price correctly when they enter the workforce as entrepreneurs or employees at larger companies. Pricing managers wishing to gain further insights into pricing best practices and those who want to gain deeper insights into pricing tools. Individuals who are interested in pricing and simply want to learn more. Pricing cannot be considered out of context and sales messages, sales channels, and other attributes that determine how the product or service is sold. Alternatively, the seller may be trying to convince the customer to buy the product. I see this all the time on my Facebook feed. Companies that, for some reason or another, believe I would be a potential customer for their product or service. They're spending advertising dollars on convincing me to buy a product that has no relevance to me. Just lately, a company selling women's undergarments has shown up a lot, not something I would spend money on. Setting the right price is not a single silver bullet that automatically and alone ensures business success. It is all about context. Pricing correctly must be part of a cohesive go-to-market and marketing strategy. While this book discusses price, it also discusses how the process of setting the right price also informs marketing and sales. Specifically, how pricing must be a part of a company's marketing strategy, how the price should influence that strategy, what pricing structure and price levels are appropriate for your company and circumstances. This is because your pricing, pricing strategy, pricing structure, and price levels are a result of everything you do in your company, including your product or service, its features, functions, and customer benefits, how your company goes to market how you market the value and benefits you bring to your customers, how your company and its products or services differ from those of the competition, which sales channel or channels you use, which customers and customer profiles you aim for, your company's overall strategic goal or goals. It is for these reasons that price is part of the four P's of marketing. The others are product, place, and promotion. I will discuss the other three Ps too. How the product or service affects how you set the price. How the place, meaning your sales channel or channels, and corporate positioning affects how you set the price. How promotion, meaning how the products or service is sold and promoted, affects sales volume and how much customers are willing to pay. This includes factors such as promotional channels, messaging, advertising, and other methods that can be used to find customers. Because pricing must be considered in context and because the way the product or service is promoted and sold affects how much customers are willing to pay, it means that when potential buyers say that something is too expensive, it is because the seller could not convince the customer of the benefits of the product or service. The seller failed to make a convincing argument that the benefits of the product or service justify the price. It's important to understand that I'm using the words make an argument in the broadest possible sense, which includes the seller's go-to-market strategy, selected market, marketing their product even though I have zero interest in it. For them, this represents dollars wasted on advertising. Finally, some people always want to buy the cheapest product despite a lower benefit simply because that is their purchasing style or, perhaps, because they lack the financial means to buy anything else. Nothing can persuade these types of customers to buy anything other than the cheapest offering. The sentence above about being unable to convince the customer of the benefit of the seller's product or service is the utmost importance to understanding how to price correctly. It also underscores the basic of these four P's of marketing and shows that pricing is part of the entire business operation. Pricing correctly is a result of everything the company does its product or service, its go-to market strategy, its selected vertical market, its marketing and sales messages, its sales channels, and its ability to close a sale. If marketing and sales fail with that message, the customer may choose to buy a cheaper product or service from that vendor or select a product or service from a competitor whose marketing and sales messages are more appealing. Or the customer may choose to buy nothing at all. In fact, many times when companies come to us with a pricing problem, 
such as too much discounting or too much downward pricing pressure, we usually discover that the pricing is incorrect. But this issue is overshadowed by the company's lack of good marketing and sales processes and messages. I often say, the disease is in the marketing and sales, but the symptoms show up in the pricing. The solution then is to fix marketing and sales, as well as to focus on pricing. Later in the book, I will talk about what it means to fix marketing. Because pricing is a result of everything you do in your company, and because every company and every company's circumstances are different, the right price for your company is not necessarily the right price for another company. I sometimes encounter leaders who ask me for the right formula for pricing and price levels for their industry. People say, I run a corporate health service company. Tell me what price I should charge. Or they may say, my company provides the watering infrastructure for cannabis growing plants. What price should I charge? Or, since we're on the topic of cannabis, what's the right price for this bottle of CBD oil I sell? Unfortunately, questions like these do not have simple answers. There's no pricing formula or price that works for every company every time. Correct pricing is about process and the need to focus on many, often relatively small, aspects of your business that, when taken all together, will have a profound impact on the bottom line. We're back to the four Ps of marketing again. A bit about me. There aren't many people who focus on pricing and support companies with their pricing challenges. So you might wonder how I got involved in this rather unusual field. When I meet people, the question I often get is whether I'm an economist. The answer to that is no. Pricing has always been an area of interest for me, but that does not make me an economist. I had the chance to run a couple of companies in Europe and a couple of companies, including a division of a fairly large public company here in the U.S. Because of my interest in pricing, we did experiments, some of which were great successes and others complete failures. What I learned in business school and from the books I read about pricing was far too academic and of no use to us. It was not practical enough. The authors of these books are either academics or consultants with little or no actual business experience. And the books talk about pricing at such a high level that it's hard, if not possible, to extract from them any practical advice on how to set prices. In fact, these books fall largely into two categories. Theoretical books full of abstract theories. The ideas and arguments in these books are frequently backed up or justified by equally abstract formulas. Trying to apply mathematical formulas to pricing does not work in practice. Anecdotal books that take the reader through a parade of case studies and stories about companies' price settings experiences, often lacking any background on why these companies change their prices or pricing strategies. These books fail to explore the thinking and process behind their pricing decisions. Neither of these provides much practical advice on the process or pricing, nor on how much to implement good pricing. It is my aim in this book to provide both the background behind good pricing decisions and practical advice for implementing good pricing. What good does it do for, say, the CEO or other executives at a $20 million manufacturer of a beauty product to know how the German railway sets its prices? What can they learn from the German railway? What good does it do for the founder of a startup that provides high school educational support services to how McDonald's started the fast food industries and its customers' love affair with supersized food? What could the educational services company learn from McDonald's? These abstract theories and formulas, which you often need to be a math major in order to understand, are completely divorced from business reality and the purchase decision points in which psychology, preferences, and perceptions determine how customers wish to buy, how they want to pay, and how much they want to pay. Because of my frustration with what I did not learn about pricing in business school and from the various books I read on the topic, in this book, you will find few references to academic research. Instead, I aim to provide real, practical advice on how product or service attributes, customer profiles, marketing, and the competitive landscape influence pricing, and how you can use all the above as levers to gain market share and higher revenues. Many people think there is some magic associated with getting pricing right. 
Many people say that pricing is an art that cannot be mastered. This is all wrong. Good pricing is about science, details, and process. Thus, I decided to develop a process that would make every pricing experiment a success by making pricing practical and not an academic exercise, and by helping companies price correctly so they can earn superior profits and generate satisfied customers too. That's what this book is about. Now, if I manage to make a few readers curious about me, and for those who might be interested in me personally, I have added some more details on my pricing journey in the appendix. Oh, and one more thing. Writing this book has been a labor of love for several years. And that means that some of these examples and stories are a couple of years old, but they are still as relevant as examples. Summary. Good pricing is all about the context around the buyer's buying decisions. And this is what much of this book is about. I will show you how companies can develop context that enables them to defend prices in such a way that both sales volume and said prices can increase.